Hey guys, welcome back. This is the 16th video in my Python programming series, and today we're going to be talking about Python modules and import statements. So this is something new that I haven't talked about yet, but Python is a modular programming language, meaning that we can use multiple files together to create one program. And you'll understand what I mean later in the video when I show some examples. Um, but yeah, so pretty much in Python, at the beginning of all your Python scripts, what you typically do is you write something like this. It says import, and you can see this highlights in orangey yellow, meaning that it is a keyword in Python. Now, there are many built-in modules, or what they called, um, in Python that contain a list of functions and classes that we can use in our Python script. So, for example, the math module, import math. This allows me to do things like dot square root, or it's the square root function, which I believe is like this and then you can put something inside of it um, so yeah there's plenty of cool things like that there's another module it's called pi game uh, we're going to be doing this later i'm going to be talking about game development with python if you want to see that leave a comment down below and i'll get it started soon and then we have import we could also import something called os and this gives us uh opportunity to do things like file paths and lots of different things like that. We can import images, we can import tons of different things into our files um, in Python. So we're just going to use the math module today for demonstration purposes. But pretty much what happens is there's a bunch of built-in modules in Python. So this one is known as a built-in module math. Uh, when you download and install Python, it pretty much you download that module. The Pygame module that I was talking about is not a built-in module. That means you actually have to go to the internet, you have to find it and install it on your computer before you can import it into your Python program. And now what's really cool about Python is that it's an open source language, meaning that you can actually create your own modules um, and they contain functions, classes, and you can use them in many of your different programs or you can also send them to a friend maybe or post them online for other people to be able to use. So let's get right into it and uh, let's do some things here so if we want to use this math module we have to first start by typing math so the name of our module here okay so math and then afterwards we're going to do with the name of a function or a class in that um that math module so you see a bunch of things pop up there uh in that little box so if i do the dot again and wait a second it should pop up yeah so there we go and you see we have cosine sine tangent all that stuff uh degrees factorial, all these things inside of our math module. So these are new things that we wouldn't be able to use before. So I'll show you if we do math.py and I print that to the screen, well, we should get an endless number of digits like this, math.py. Uh, is it running? There we go. So it just had to print a bunch of numbers. So math.py, it didn't print all of them. I think it only went to 10 decimal points. Um, so yeah, and then I'll show you if I comment out this uh, this import math, what will happen if I try to do this? We get an error because, well, math is not defined. We didn't import it at the top of our program. So we'll uncomment this now. Now I can do things like math.degrees. Uh, degrees simply turn something that is in radians into degrees. So if I did math.py in here, for example, and we print that to the screen, we get 180 degrees like that. Uh, they also have the math.radians I believe which does the opposite so it turns a degree into a radian so if we did 60 degrees here like that and we get 1.047 which is about pi over 3 uh, radians like that so yeah there's lots of cool things that we can do with these modules now I'll actually show you an example of how we can use our own modules and how we can import our own modules into our function. So I'm going to just start by typing import. And I'm going to type my module just like this. OK, um, now I haven't actually created this module yet. We're going to do that in just a second. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to find the directory that my main script is in. So it's in tutorials up here. I've got this open and remember uh, how we had the file in here as well, because it has to be in the same directory. So I'm going to create a new file in that directory. So file new file. I'm going to save this one as my module. Now spelling is very important. Again, capitals do matter. Uh, and it has to be in the same directory as our main script, which it is like that. 
Now inside of this module, I'm going to write a very basic function. If you haven't seen that video yet, go check that out first. Um, we just talked about some basic functions and what they do and the use of them. So I'm going to define, I'm just going to call it my func like this. It's going to take a parameter called x and all it's going to do is return x plus 5. So very basic function like that, but just for demonstration purposes here, okay? And now I have my module imported like this. So I can actually use my module. So I'm going to do print my module dot my func because that's the name of my function and then inside I need to give it a number so what number do we want to use maybe we'll use 6 and we print this out and you see we get 11 so by simply all I did was create a new file put it inside of my um, same directory as this script here and easy enough we were able to use it now I can actually create multiple functions in here so I can create define another func like this, that'll be the name, this one will take x again, and inside here I'm going to return x integer division 5. And then again we could use that one, so in, instead of my func we'll use another func like this, and let's just type in a big number like that and see what we get. There we go, so again it's working perfectly fine. So that's how uh, modular programming is what it's called works in Python. Now obviously if you're going to be doing modular programming it's usually for larger uh, programs and bigger programs where you want multiple files to keep things organized. Say maybe if you're doing a flight simulator you may have one module that includes all of your physics functions. So you know that when you need to do physics you're going to import your physics function and then you can, or module, sorry, and then you can use the functions from there. And the great thing about this is that these, uh, these modules are reusable. In other Python files, I can import them and I can reuse these functions. I don't have to constantly rewrite them inside of my script like this. So this has been a very basic tutorial, uh, just an introduction to modular programming. I showed the math module a little bit. If you want to learn about some of the built-in uh, sorry, modules in Python, then just go ahead and go to their website and you can see a bunch of the different ones that they have. Another one that we may be using later is called OS, so the statement for that is just import OS. And if you want to get started with game development, you can look into Pygame, which is this cool thing that I'm going to be doing a tutorial series on later. So yeah, that's been the video for today. We talked a little bit about modular programming. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe and I will see you again tomorrow with more content.